Hello folks and welcome once more to my channel where I'm going to spend pretty much the rest of December deciding Hey, you know what? Let's make a um, bunch of random D&D videos. Now, these videos are going to be based off of a art prompt of D&D proportions from Scarlet Moth from 2017. I couldn't find one more recent and or one that could fill out the entirety of December, so here you go. Planar travel is weird. Let's let's get that out of the way right now. It's just one of those weird things that are just weird. Because it's moving from one's realm to another. And it's not typically all that peaceful or nice or pleasant. I uh, haven't had many situations where that's happened. One time we were trying to do a reboot of, an, of the evil campaign uh, that we were doing. And the idea was that one of the gods of magic having looked down at us and said man you've screwed this place up something fierce how about you go back in time and and that was kind of our way of trying to reboot that campaign it didn't really work um, played a grand total of like three sessions of it didn't have the same charm and there was a lot of the a lot of the party trying to think of situations and events and whatnot um but that's more time travel than it is planar travel. But that one had involved the Moonlit, which is an Elder Evil, which is one of the Elder Evils that I love the most because it's kind of the more threatening ones. Despite how long it can possibly take to get the Moonlit to the party. But regardless, um, the more prevalent one that sticks out in my head when it comes to planar travel, though, is not... He, he didn't die, now that I think about it, but still. Um, the party was facing off... This is the Farland game again. The party was facing off against this Mind Flare. Uh, guy didn't know he was a Mind Flare, but over the course of the battle, his ma the helmet that he had like blew off, and the faceplate of it you know, snapped away and revealed the Mind Flare. And suddenly we were, instead of fighting these uh, orcs and this military leader, we were fighting some orcs and a mind flare. And we didn't have many uh, people that were very terribly close range, so that left my DMPC, Iggy, to go up to it and just start whacking away at it with his Morningstar. And being 5th edition, it's generally a little bit, um, forgiving in the, in the, uh, whole combat thing when it comes to melee and range. Pretty much as long as you're proficient with the thing, you have a good chance to hit. The sadness came was, I think it was a misspelling, or not a misspelling, a misreading of the plane shift spell. Essentially... The way that I had done it was that he needed to make a, a melee spell attack against Iggy, and were it to succeed, he needs to make a save, and if he failed the save, he gets teleported to a plane of his choice, or a plane that he's been to before, and I decided that the best way that he would, going, he would go to get rid of a player character or whatnot was to plane shift him to a very very dangerous plane of existence and in the world of farland that is known as um the maelstrom which essentially think all of the four elemental planes but a giant roiling pot of that it is not a nice place and expecting to live there for more than two hours is a miracle and just with a tickling pop, he gets displaced to the plane of Maelstrom. And uh, I had ser I had done a lot of rolling for Iggy to see whether or not he could survive on this plane that barely had survivable terrain that wasn't covered in fire. Um, it was pretty nasty, and it was uh, kind of a kind of a side quest in and of itself because they took out the took out the lord the mind flare 
ran away because there was a lot of orcs on their ass after that. They were heavily injured and they had pretty much all decided, yeah, we're going to go get Iggy back. I was like, okay, how? Because <laughs> they were not going to be able to afford a resurrection and the best way that they could get him was to try to find like a gate or another plane shift and whatnot. Eventually it came up to this elaborate plot where they opened up a gate at this particular location and had sent an earth elemental, I want to say, through in order to find Iggy. Um, and pretty much they had like done coordinates and shit and stuff and things uh, in order to find him. And over the course of several hours and several survival checks from said elemental, he eventually was found. And it was revealed that it had an effect on him. <laughs> As when he came out of it, he was no longer human, but he was an Earth Ganassi. Rolled for which element affected him the most and everything. It was, per it was an interesting idea. And um, I'm glad we did it, but at the same time, it was just a, one, of those set, uh, one of those times where I looked at it and said to myself, I was not really expecting them to care that much about Iggy, but okay. Because they had seriously spent... I think four or five sessions working on getting this plan to work. <laughs> so I'm glad they liked Iggy, even though he was going, he was supposed to be the equivalent of a sidekick character. Thank you everyone so very much for watching and listening to these random seeming smaller D and D stories. If you guys like this series, like comment, subscribe, all that fun stuff. I hope to be, doing this throughout the entirety of December, and uh, if you are here for more D&D based stuff, I have several D&D stories videos and some opinionated videos and some Let's Plays based around Dungeons and Dragons game. Some of my more favorite ones are the Dark Alliance games, and uh, check those out. And if you want to torture yourself, there's also Eye of the Beholder for Game Boy Advance. Don't know why you want to, but there's that. Thank you everyone so very much for watching, and I hope to see you guys in the next video. Take care. Cheers.